AMD and Intel just launched their new products for 2024 and also had some teasers about their upcoming products uh, later this year. For AMD, they uh, updated their APU range after a while now and they gave some information about the successor to the, let's say, more powerful APU for the laptop market, uh, going by the name of Strixpoint. So Strixpoint uh, is gonna challenge Intel and we can see that uh, Intel also had some new updates. And Intel's updates were obviously some information about Arrow Lake and Luna Lake. And Arrow Lake will be both for the desktop market and also obviously for the mobile market, laptop market. Whereas Luna Lake, I think, uh, most likely looks like to be a super, super efficient uh, on the lower end. So basically, it's going to be only for the mobile market and also in the, I think it's going to be in the, let's say, Meteor Lake U kind of, so up to, I guess, 25, maybe at most 30 watts. Whereas Meteor Lake is up to 45 watts. And Arrow Lake will obviously be the rest of the mainstream laptop and desktops will probably will go up to 70, 80, 90 watts and above in the desktop, obviously. So yeah, this is the products going to be launched uh, next year for uh, this year for Intel and AMD. And in my opinion, it's a very interesting market, especially on the mobile market. So if we get the desktop for a moment, we go to the mobile market. So this is uh, according to Statista, very good graphs actually, you can see that AMD, as we've seen, starting to get back some market share. And the latest data point suggests somewhere around 23%. Obviously, we don't know how, like, how exactly these numbers are, but the general trend is that AMD is winning back some market share. And uh, although it looks kind of slow over the past few quarters, you start to see it's ticking up for AMD and ticking down for Intel. And in addition to that, obviously, we are aware that in the general market, AMD and Intel are losing market chain combined to other options, which is ARM. And ARM in this case is basically mostly Apple laptops. Um, so yeah, so I, I would say Intel is generally at the risk of losing market share to the, like, let's say uh, AMD and also to other players like Apple and Qualcomm coming soon. So how will Intel defend this market share? Where? We stated that uh, obviously Arrow Lake and uh, Luna Lake are gonna be the new products for Intel uh, coming up this year. And previously we know that by end of last year they just launched Meteor Lake. Meteor Lake was, it's not bad, but it's nowhere near good enough that uh, basically where uh, Intel hyped it up to be. Um, so Meteor Lake I would say is at the same level at, uh, uh, as AMD's uh, Phoenix, which launched early last year. Now, Meteor Lake just recently launched. I mean, the products are gonna be on the market very soon, so you could say it's almost one year later than AMD's equivalent. Now, until Luna Lake launched, we can see here that they didn't say a whole lot. I expect like maybe Q2 or Q3, that's when we're gonna see Luna Lake. And remember again, Luna Lake is mostly for like thin and efficient laptops. Don't expect this Luna Lake to go into like gaming laptops in that sense but this is going to be a nice notebook for you know students and uh, gonna do well with uh, let's say excel and note taking and all those kind of thin and light laptops so i expect uh, luna lake to be very efficient actually to be honest i think it's gonna do really really well but it's gonna launch probably later than q2 maybe q3 um, in the higher end intel is gonna depend on even older let's say raptor like uh, refresh so the 14th gen and these are like power hungry and yeah th these are not in my opinion great products and this is where i see the biggest problem for intel so at the lowest end luna lake should be doing good by by later this year and until then meteor lake has to basically have a steady ground um, it's not bad but it's not perfect now going to amd it's very interesting because i mentioned that last year they had the phoenix apu which is in a lot of laptops now in different variants and phoenix is doing really really well and it's basically i would say very competitive with the newly launched meteor lake from intel and hawk point is basically phoenix with updated ai engine 60 percent faster ai engine but it's basically the same product and hawk point is gonna have also 60 percent faster ai engine than um, intel's meteor lake 
which is on the market right now. So Meteor Lake is fighting Hawk Point and Strix, Strix Point. Sorry, Hawk and um, Phoenix. And on the higher end for AMD, we will have Strix Point, which is going to be, I most likely it's going to be on again on TSMC 4 nanometer. But the interesting part is that they will increase the core of the CPU part to 12 cores. And um, on the on the GPU side, I think they're going to increase the 12 execution units to 16. And it's going to be an upgraded RDNA 3.5. So we would probably expect quite a big uh, leap in GPU performance. And also I would say probably really, really insane increase in CPU performance as you expect. Uh, basically because you're going from 8 cores, 8 Zen 4 cores to 12 Zen 5 cores. Uh, on a better node so 50% more cores and it's like it's not like it's equivalent cores it's actually a most likely 20% faster on each core so I would see probably Strix point is going to be one of the biggest if not the biggest leap in APU CPU performance and in addition to that it's going to be a quite sufficient like really really good as well GPU increase performance and some people are speculating that it's going to be at the same level, kind of like uh, undedicated uh, NVIDIA graphics card, like the 3050. So yeah, Strix Point, I think launching most likely late Q2, uh, if we're lucky, or maybe Q3. That's where I see AMD like have a really le nice lead. I don't see Arrow Lake, um, the Arrow Lake products that going to launch late in 2024. If they're on time, I don't. I don't think it's gonna be able to match AMD. Um, at least it's not gonna be ahead of AMD in the market, which is yeah. Which I think is uh, this. This will show that, in my opinion, going back to the graph on the from Statista from the market share, we can see that. I think coming back in year or two years time, I think AMD will have at least closed on to the thirty percent market share. That's my guess at as of right now. And hence also why this could be a trouble for Intel, because again, looking at Intel's revenue per segment, we can see though, although that on the second there on row five, you can see that data center used to be very big. They've been losing market to AMD and margin. Now client computing is where it's basically Intel's best segment right now, almost 8 billion last quarter, Q3 2023. And they have fairly good margins there. Now AMD, you would say the equivalent uh, the equivalent uh, segments for AMD would be the client and the gaming, which together are combined roughly at two and a half, three billion, depending on the uh, quarter in the past couple of uh, quarters. And their margin is not great as Intel, but I mean, they are going up as you can see. If you look at the Q2 margins and then you go, uh, and then yeah, back in history, you can see that AMD is kind of getting good mar uh, good margin and good market share. So, if AMD managed to go from anywhere like let's say low twenties to high twenties or, or uh, low thirty percent market share, that's probably something like fifty percent increase in the revenue, if not more. I mean, it's a bit difficult to say because there's so many products going into. It's like consoles, it's handhelds in dedicated GPUs and how do we know where exactly uh, yeah the laptop market how much how much share of those are in the laptop market but I think like Intel is gonna you know in this last big segment that they are defending so hard now it's gonna be a, a big threat from AMD and as well don't forget that yeah I mean Apple will continue sell their their M chips which will in eat into both Intel and AMD as well as um, Qualcomm entering the market very soon as they showed a couple of months ago with their new ARM chips for Windows. So in AMD's case, it's not a big problem because they are not a big player compared to Intel. You have your total market and AMD, as long as they basically get market share from Intel for a few years, they're fine, even though ARM is eating into the entire market. Uh, and God knows, like maybe uh, both Intel and AMD will launch their own ARM products. Uh, as of right now, there's not a huge indication. I, although I know that AMD previously had some projects going on with Jim Keller on ARM. But yeah, so that's basically where I see things going both on product uh, lineup and uh, on uh, revenue lineup. Uh, and I think like in Intel 
are I mean they are showing some progress for sure like I mean Arrow like looks like to be a good uh, architecture and as well Luna Lake is going to be very efficient but the problem with Luna Lake is just it's four four large cores and four uh, E cores so that's like yeah that's not going to compete well with uh, 12 uh, fast uh, Zen 5 cores which AMD will launch in Strix point and let alone we haven't even talked in this video about Strix Halo which is basically I don't know like uh, something like two to three times faster than Strix point on the GPU side and another four cores so they're going to increase the core count from uh, Strix point which is at 12 to let's say 16 that's at least what the rumors are so yes, yeah, Strix Halo is another like, I mean, but that's basically, I see Strix Halo more a threat to NVIDIA, actually. Because at that point, when you have an APU that, that competitive and that great, which is basically as fast as a PlayStation 5 or something like that, a whole lot of people are not going to even bother to buy desktop GPUs or laptops with dedicated GPU. For example, I, I'm running a Lenovo with a RTX 4060 for video editing. It's not the best, but I mean, it's, it's still very good. Um, but if I would have the option to have a like integrated Strix Halo um, um, pr product, which is basically something like Apple's M series, yeah, I would definitely go for that in a heartbeat because uh, it's it's just a more efficient solution. And I'm not a huge gamer, so I I see a lot of people making that decision. So for AMD, I don't see any problems whatsoever in the coming eighteen months. Uh, Intel. Not looking quite as bad as the product lineup did last year and the year before, in, especially in the mobile segment where you're restricted by the amount of power you can put into your laptop. You know, I mean, on the desktop side, Intel can kind of circumvent the issue with basically just pushing a lot of wattage into the into the CPUs and you sure you have to cool that down, but you can technically do it, although it's not a very pleasant and nice solution compared to AMD's Zen lineup on the desktop. But on the laptop, you just cannot put like hundreds of watts into a laptop CPU. You're gonna burn your laptop down basically. And it's not a pleasant experience to have a laptop running on, let's say 150, 200 watts uh, power constantly only on the CPU part and another 100 or 200 watts on the GPU. It's not gonna work. So, so yeah, Intel wasn't uh, in a good position a couple of years ago and last year. This year on the low end, they're gonna be good in my opinion. But AMD is still ahead. And since they are ahead, they should take market share in my opinion. So thank you for watching the video. And uh, please make sure to like or put any comments about something that I can improve. And yeah, if, if you like the video, uh, subscribe and see you in the next one.